Hello everyone, this is Sertab. Today we will be talking about adding some uh, new enhancements to our FPL optimization model that I have been developing. I wanted this episode to be more interactive, so I invited uh, my friend James here. Um, so we will be talking about how to add uh, bench variables first, and then if we have enough time, we will also talk about how to add noise to uh, projected points so that instead of actually optimizing over a noisy sample, you can randomize the input a little bit and then see all the different scenarios you might encounter. So before we start, uh, I will ask James to introduce himself and then we can uh, go forward from there. Hello. Um, yeah, thank you for inviting me on tonight. Um, sure. My name is James. I'm a keen Liverpool fan and a football fan in general and I've been an FPL player for about six or so years now with a couple of seasons before that where I quit about two game weeks in. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a software developer but I don't work with Python necessarily um, so I don't really know as well as you do the code that you're working on for these optimization tutorials um, but I've always had a keen interest in analytics and optimization and that isn't just in the the strict sense that kind of you know it in it in your profession because it, you know mm -hmm. it's your job and you, you do proper optimization I'm talking about just you know I, I would always try and play things and do things optimally in, in just my hobbies and interests you know for example I used to play World of Warcraft and I'd always simulate my character and um, get like an output of data and try and make sure that I'm making the most optimal decisions for gear and talents and things like that um, so when you came knocking on the door of FPL last year out of nowhere <laughs> and started applying optimization to the incredible models we already had you know I was I was straight in your DMs with that trying to get some more information um, so yeah I've kind of transitioned from just being a casual FPL player getting into the data um, and just and now I'm totally caught up in it and it, it, I just find it incredibly interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing how far we can take it and how much I can use it to help my own decisions as well. Yeah, like uh, it's funny you mentioned that actually um, I played World of Warcraft a little bit too but I was trying to apply optimization to uh, Magic the Gathering and that game is so complicated like I tried it a few times it was just like on like over my head it was a few years ago and then um, I was also looking for, you know, uh, like smaller games I can apply optimization to. And then I saw FPL and I said, okay, this is perfect. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because there are like clear rules what you can do. And then like all the players are the same. There are no like, you know, custom features. Have you ever applied any other types of uh, analytics to FPL before? Um, analytics in terms of just raw data, you know, mm -hmm. FPL review was a game changer when he came around. I think it was about three years ago now. You know, before that, you, you'd just be looking up. Maybe I think we had like underlying numbers at that point on understat, but that was mm -hmm. it. Um, we, we didn't have FBRF, um, and it was a, a different game to be honest with the the data that we had available to us at the time. Um, so I've kind of I've always enjoyed finding data and analytics um to aid my decisions but a big problem of that is always just the fact that it's, it's just raw data and fbl is an ever-changing dynamic problem um and you need optimization to really help you with that with your long-term decisions um it's not as simple as just going logging onto fbl review clicking suggest transfer first and you know going with the the best transfers over the next eight game weeks or something um because you know you can transfer players in and out and you've got chips um and you might have your own opinions about how you want your squad structure to look mm -hmm. that might not actually line up directly with the optimal x point solution and that's okay and that's actually you know good because no one's actually saying that the x point expected points projections are you know entirely accurate and they're finished you know yeah, there, there are edges people can make um so yeah i've always enjoyed using analytics and hopefully yeah going forward awesome. as well yeah 
Uh, indeed, like uh, availability of prediction data is a huge thing. I can, I can easily see it because I mean I started doing FPL optimization because the uh, the predict uh, prediction models were av available at the time I started. Um, so I just wanted to like leverage that uh, data already, like the FPL review, for example, as you mentioned. Uh, who spent a lot of time on uh, like actually making uh, his model better and then applying machine learning techniques. So it was kind of perfect for me to also like get the data and apply optimization on top of it. Yeah, it, it, you turn up at the perfect time, honestly. If you decided to do this three or four years ago, you wouldn't <laughs> have been able to at all, you know. That's true. F five years ago, <laughs> the the most used term in fantasy football community w was form over fixtures. Honestly, yeah, that, that's that's how bad people's understanding of the game and decisions was. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, so we will also talk a little bit more about uh, these other stuff uh, during the stream. But let me start with um, actually sharing my. Uh, sharing the agenda on the top right, and you can also see my editor. Hopefully, we introduce ourselves. Um, I will start with reviewing the model. If you haven't watched the previous uh, episodes, if you have been watching, I will be using the multi-period uh, file. This is the file I generated after third episode, not the fourth one. Um, I'm using this one because this is a little bit cleaner. Under multi-period pi file, so this is the, uh, this is file is actually uh, available on GitHub. Zoom in slightly. Actually, let me collapse all of these things. So this this is a very simple file. Uh, so we have two methods here, uh, two functions actually. So the first one is for getting your uh, data from the FPL API, and then the second one is solving the multi-period FPL optimization problem. So um, so I will go over this uh, sole uh, multi-period FPL problem. So the first parameter this function receives is the team ID. And I will talk about how we are using team ID in a second. And then we also get the game week we are solving the problem for. And then we were also getting a number of free transfers. And also how many uh, periods or like the length of the planning horizon uh, noted as horizon here. And we also had two different objective types. The first one was regular, where you um, value each game week the same way you do uh, for the next game week. And also there is a DK type of objective, meaning that you give more um, importance or you think the, the next, like immediate game week is more important than uh, future game weeks. And so this DK base is actually related to this objective when objective is regular, we are not using the DK base here. Um, and also let me go over this uh, part quickly. So this data is coming from, uh, like currently I'm using FPI reviews uh, projected uh, points. And also I'm also using FPL API uh, values for the num uh, for getting the list of players, teams, whatever. And so after reading this data, we will see uh, this get data in a second, but um, I'm getting this merge data, which has everything like uh, uh, player information, their prices, um, project points, everything is this uh, inside this merge data, which is a, a pandas data frame. So think like this is kind of an Excel table. Um, that's easier to understand, I think. And element types are just goalkeepers, defenders, uh, midfielders, and forwards, teams, game weeks, and all game week is actually a, a super set of game weeks. Uh, we are also adding previous game week to this list, and we need this because uh, for stuff like um, number of free transfers or budget, sometimes we also need to know the initial condition so that um, we need a bigger set than only only the planning horizon game weeks. Um, so here I am using uh, the package says optpy. I am the main developer of this uh, package. Um, so I actually want to apply says optpy to a practical problem. That's why I started actually working on um, FPL. I am using 1.0.5 alpha uh, version. And if you want to run this model, make sure that you have at least one 
0.4. Um, after I uh, create the model here, uh, as you see, I'm just initializing the model without anything. We are adding variables. So variables are the things that you need to decide, like which players to have in your squad, which players to have in your lineup, again, your captain, vice captain, which players to transfer in, which players to transfer out. And there are also other stuff like, um, I should say, uh, like secondary stuff like in the bank amount. So even though you m might not think that you are deciding on, you know, how much money to carry, like, like directly, um, those are also decision variables being affected by the decisions over here. So for because of because these values are not fixed, th those are also variables in our model. So we will choose uh, which players to transfer in or sell, and then in the bank will uh, affect it. Similar for free transfers. Uh, in the previous episodes, I also talked about uh, penalized transfer logic, where you where we need a binary uh, auxiliary variable uh, just to model the logic. Um, I won't go over these dictionaries, but basically these dictionaries are making sure that we have the, the sell price, buy price, um, and all those kind of details about the, uh, the game weeks and the players. And then the constraints are essentially defining how we write the problem. Like, uh, like in this case, for example, um, uh, like squad as a variable uh, is defined over all the game weeks because we need to know your squad from the previous game week. And we are saying that whichever um, uh, whichever players you had in the last game week, those values should be equal to one, because squad variables and most of these variables here are binary variables, so they are either true or false. And true is represented with one, and false is represented with zero, uh, as usual. And so this initial squad is then a list of player IDs. And then I'm saying that, okay, these players I have, I already have in my team. Um, so these initial conditions and then combining with these other like regular FPL constraints, like I need to have 15 players exactly in my squad. Uh, I need to have 11 players exactly in my lineup. So these are coming from the problem description itself. Um, Again, you, I, I need to have exactly one captain, vice vice captain, but at the same time, my captain and vice captain cannot be the same uh, player. So I'm saying that captain plus vice captain then is less than or equal to one. So this is basically the structure of an optimization model. You are defining rules. You are defining which values to, to play with here. And then you are just passing everything to an optimization solver. Here I'm using uh, CBC. And then it's just solving the problem for you and then generating you the optimal decisions. So one thing I need to mention here is that when I say optimal uh, scenario, it is based on the projected points. This doesn't mean that so this is the overall best because optimization modeling itself, um, actually you are taking a real life problem. So this could be also a business problem. You are making a small controllable uh, version of it and then you are playing with it. So it doesn't mean that anything that comes out of the model should be applied directly. But since we are making lots of assumptions, uh, we are actually simplifying the problem in a bit. So like if you think about FPL, there are tons of things you need to just to be aware. Like even like here, uh, I downloaded like FPL review values. But um, so if you check the like the expected points, you might see that some of the players have a certain expected minutes, which may not be true based on uh, you know the, the recent information you have. Suppose you learned that a player got injured or you watched the international game and you saw that a player got injured. So then you should be able to just say that, okay, this player obviously have lower expected minutes now and then lower projected points. How should I just decide going forward? So um, with this, so in the earlier episodes, we didn't add any bench decisions here. So you, you, you see that we have squad and lineup and captain, vice captain, uh, but we didn't have bench variables uh, because we know that if a player is in the squad, not in the lineup, then that player should be that should that player should be on the bench, right? But the bench order is also important, and based on which players you are choosing for your lineup, actually. 
So you might want to give some more weight to your bench. For example, if you are playing uh, a risky player like uh, like Mahrez or Jota, whose expected minutes might be a little bit low, then you might want to have a better bench for your team. Or suppose you are you have three players from both like Liverpool and Manchester United. Uh, so if there are like any COVID worries, like if you are thinking that a m- match can get cancelled, <laughs> like we had last year, so you might want to have some kind of um, like a stronger bench for that particular reason. I keep seeing on Twitter that um, that like this is the year to have a strong bench. You need to have like better bench. So what they mean is that you need to choose a you know, bench players whose projected points are at least somewhat good. So in our current model, if you just solve this problem, bench uh, ver- uh, bench players are not returning you any uh, any points or they are not contributing to the objective function here, which makes optimization to spend entire money uh, for the lineup players and optimization might ignore and might choose the like the cheapest options possible for the bench but we know that like based on the criteria as we talked here that may not be the case um, I'm going to ask you James about this so when you are choosing your bench uh, like players or when deciding you know which uh, players to buy and then put it on your bench uh, like how do you approach that problem in general so, you know, it, it changes depending on where we are in the season. You know, mm-hmm. in, in the um, Game Week 1 team that you picked before the season began, I've pretty much always just looked for as close to a bare-bones bench as possible. You know, 4.5 million keeper, 4 million keeper. Just a mm-hmm. dead keeper on your bench. Um, there would always just be a 4.0 million dead defender on the bench. And then you would have the bare minimum 4.5 million, either midfielder or a forward. And then, so effectively, I would just be looking for one playing bench player, a 4.5 million defender, and then try and get as much of the money into my starting 11 as possible. Um, Historically, uh, you know, most models don't tend to agree with this. If you Mm -hmm. ever try to look for, you know, a wildcard team on FPL Review, you know, you're likely to always get a much better spread of funds across the, across the squad. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I think this is this is one of the things that's so good about optimization is that it's it's actually quite opinionated. You know, what you're trying to do here isn't actually trying to make the one model to rule them all. There, there are a lot of different variables and factors, such as bench weights, which you're, you're going to add today, but mm-hmm. also like the decay rate, which you um, looked at earlier as one of your inputs to the model. You know, these are important decisions that can be edited um, and are opinionated. No, people will have different ideas as to what is the optimal value to assign to them um, and that's okay and it's it, it, it's fun to experiment with different values and see what the optimizer outputs for yeah. that yeah um so you're right and i also want to uh, want to share my um screen here i will show you something um I mentioned this to you before, but um, so this is my uh, like the, the current planner I am using right now. So this has all the uh, like the optimization parameters I have, including bench weights here. Um, so like uh, so even can we in... just end the stream right now. <laughs> yeah. So you, see, <laughs> you just you just share this on Twitter. We'll we'll all download it, and then everyone can go. Home. <laughs> everyone can go. Home. That's true. Um, so in this case, like for example, for uh, like bench weights, um, I'm using um, the values that uh, we have collected over the uh, re-optimization competition. In this case, I will also show you how it looks like. The order of the uh, bench uh, players, I mean, that's obvious because you will always sort them by the uh, projected points. But then based on the importance you assign to the first bench p- uh, player and then the second bench player, it will be always uh, different. So in, in this case, for example, I can say, oh, my bench is very important. There's almost like 100% chance that uh, like my uh, one of my players won't play. 
And then if you are taking a risk uh, with a player, you know that uh, whose minutes might be limited. Or like if you have a worry for injury, then you can assign this. And this will actually change the optimal solution. So the um, let me go back. And the way to implement bench variables is a little bit interesting because in squad and lineup, we define these variables as binary variables over all the players we have in our set. Uh, but here, um, when you are defining bench variables, you need to define a different uh, binary variable for every bench position because this is mostly because you will assign different weights uh, to like, based on the bench order. So the order is important. So you need to have also a different dimension. So Just here. To jump yeah. in very quickly here as well. So the code that you're looking at here, um, it's important to point, point out that you're using um, SASOPTPI um, classes here. Yes. And SASOPTPI has its own documentation, which you can find uh, from Googling it, or one of us will tweet it after the stream. So mm -hmm. if you are trying to follow, follow along with this, or you do try to extend it, um, you know, after the stream, um, if you are getting stuck, a really good place to look is the SASOPTPI documentation, um, mm -hmm. as well as Stack Overflow. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for pointing out. Yeah, that's true. Um, by the way, I wrote the documentation, so if you see any mis like typos, just keep it to yourselves. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> just, <laughs> just let me know. <laughs> I can fix it. Um, so here, then. Um, before actually even adding the variable, um, let me actually see. Uh, so here, we introduce ourselves. We okay, modeling bench variables. Okay, first of all, we need to add the bench variables, and then we will add the uh, bench constraints, and then we will uh, test a few scenarios with uh, different bench weights. Uh, I probably won't cover auto bench weights here, but that's what I'm uh, actually using in my own model based on the expected uh, minutes. Um, so here now, let me go back here. And then, so as I mentioned, the order is important. So I will add a new set. Uh, it's, it will be just a Python list and order is just zero, one, two, three. And the zero position is actually the, the bench goalkeeper. We will also write a separate um, uh, a separate constraint just for that. Under variables now, we can add bench, and we say model add variables is the way to add uh, multiple variables. So Visual Studio Code is just great. It just shows you the the syntax and the uh, the uh, documentation, and you can also see the examples here. But as you see, so the first argument, the, the arguments that doesn't have any key are treated as the indices of the variable. And as you can see the examples here, the first uh, dimension we have is player. So this will be a, a variable defined for all the players and then for all the game weeks and order. And here, so that's why actually adding bench variables is actually making problem much bigger than compared to adding just squad and lineup. So the bench itself is a, just a big set of variables. I will name this as uh, bench. And then the variable type is binary um, because uh, this is a true or false decision. So either you have a particular player for a particular game week in particular order is true. Or not so it's either one or zero so now that we added our uh, uh, bench uh, variable let me check uh, let me see what kind of constraints we need to add so obviously there are no initial conditions for bench because it only affects the future game weeks and you see that our first constraint is that we, we need to have 15 players uh, in squad we need to have uh, exactly 11 lineup players by the way, this constraint we will modify in the future episodes because this is not entirely correct. If you are using bench boost, your number of lineup players is actually 15. But since we don't have any chips logic implemented here, uh, we can just say that at constraints. And then here, I will take a sum over all the players for this particular game week. Bench, and then I will say PW. 
for p in players and oh forgot order uh, use o for it uh, for p in players uh, for o in order equal to four w in game weeks so the reason why players and order is inside this uh, some expression and the why game week is outside is because we want to have four bench players every game week. So this constraint needs to be true for all the game weeks. That's why uh, four, uh, four <laughs> uh, the for loop for game weeks is outside this uh, expression. But so this is just summing over all the bench uh, variables for all the uh, players and then their order. And we know that it needs to be equal to four. And then we can say that um, bench count. But there's also um, one thing we need to be careful here because we don't want. Um, so, so if I define this problem, if I just write this constraint as as this, um, so the optimization doesn't know that each order should have exactly one player. That's why this constraint is, even though it's correct, it's just missing. So. Uh, we actually want this, so we want for all in order outside of this uh, loop, and then this is equal to uh, one, so that for every game week, for every order, suppose the order zero, we chose bench goalkeeper, right? So the summation of uh, players should be equal to one. So we want just exactly one uh, uh, bench player for every single position. So the so the missing part here again there is something missing is that order zero bench order zero is special because bench order zero is always uh, is reserved for uh, goalkeepers so we don't want this constraint to include other types of players so this constraint again is correct but missing we can either keep this as is and then add the, the bench goalkeeper constraint separately or we can do this, we can say for one, two, three, this is true. But if we can add constraints, so here I will do the same. I will say expression sum bench p w but zero instead of o, so that we hard code we are hard coding the position here for p in players. But here I will say not every player, but for particular players. So I will say that um actually we can even make that a dictionary. Let me this player type will be coming from merge data. And then let's get their their element type and then convert this to a dictionary. So what I'm doing here is uh, merge data. Remember, it was kind of um, like an Excel table. It was a pandas data frame. An element type is particularly a column that shows uh, which kind of player this player is, whether it's a goalkeeper, defender, whatever. And then I'm taking that particular column and converting it into a dictionary. So whenever I give the player ID to this dictionary, it will return me the type of the player. So instead of uh, I was using this, um, just I was uh, using dot uh, loc, but instead of using it this way, you can also do it, uh, like you can convert it to a dictionary and it will be faster actually. So I will say player type uh, p is equal equal to zero, I think. Um, I don't remember what the element type was, was it one, two, three, four? The player uh, type or the element type we were looking for was one. Then I will say here is that bench uh, p w zero for p in players. If player type p is equal equal to one, then this summation I want this summation to be equal to one for every game week. Bench goalkeeper. Is it clear this part for you, James? Yes, definitely. Okay. So, actually, so this debugger is nice because we can go step by step, but I will just stop it here. And then let's see what we have. Uh, we edit the, the bench constraints, forcing to have a bench goalkeeper. 
and then forcing to have a single bench player for every position. Um, but currently optimization doesn't know a lineup player cannot be on the bench. So what will happen if we don't add that constraint is if we assign any weight to bench, whoever has the highest projected points in our squad, entire squad, including lineup players, will be also selected for bench. So this is just a logical constraint we need to add. So we need to say that model add constraints. So we will say lineup PW. So um, if uh, you have a, a player for lineup, plus bench p w n o so in this case though since bench variables are also have this extra dimension and we don't care which order uh, the player appear in the bench so we are, we are just wondering if that player ever is in the bench or not so we, we can say that we can actually add this expression sum over here and i will say some bench variables over o in order this should be less than or equal to one. Name, lineup, bench, relation, and then close this. And so, as you see, just like Visual Studio Code is just warning me that like P is not defined here because this uh, constraint should be defined over every player for P in uh, players for W in game weeks. Um, now we know that if a line if a player is in, in our lineup then this summation will be zero meaning that he won't appear in our bench or if a player is in the bench then uh, this summation will be one forcing lineup to get value zero so all, the, all those variables will be false so we added this relation to let me see if we are missing anything here mm. anything you can See right off the bat, James or no? Nope. Okay. For me. Okay, then let me check the steps. Okay, so um, as you see, we added the the variables, we added the constraints. I think uh, we will try uh, a few scenarios now uh, before testing a few scenarios. What we need to do is we need to assign some kind of value for these bench positions because we are getting. Uh, expect like the projected points for all the lineup players, but none points for the bench uh, players currently. So what we need to do now is um, we need to add a new uh, dictionary here, and then I will just call this uh, bench weights, and then zero will be our the bench weight of zero will be our uh, bench weight for the goal goalkeeper bench goalkeeper. So um, as you have seen uh, before, I was using 3% uh, for this. And then for the first position, I was using uh, 21%. And then for the second, I think it was 6%. And then for the third one, it's just, you know, uh, it's very unlikely for your third bench to come in. So its value is usually low, less than 0.2% most of the time. Um, so now we have our bench weights, so we need to add these uh, projected points, bench projected points, into our um, objective. Here, as you see, our game week XP is defined by points, uh, player week, which is just the projected points for that player, for that week, times the multiplier. And then the multiplier was just lineup plus captain, uh, just ignore the vice captain for now, because you get just multiplier 1 if that player is in your lineup but not a captain and if captain is also 1 then this should be 2 right because you get double points for your captain except it is a triple captain which we will add later here I am also giving some weight to vice captain uh, currently it's 10% as you see um, again this is similar to the bench weights again you don't want optimization to just ignore vice captain and the bench. That's why we are assigning some weight. Lately, I was using a very a low value for vice captain weight because, I mean, it's rare for your captain selection to not come into play. But again, it's a preference thing. Here, though, now, when we were multiplying a points player week with these values, we didn't have bench. So now we will add this expression sum. And then we will go 
over all the uh, possible bench uh, positions. So we will say ben, uh, bench P, W, and O. So as is right now, as you see, bench is is if a player is in your bench, if we leave it like this, uh, it will get value one, and then it will be added as hundred percent important. But we know that that's not what we want, and we want to add this actually bench weights. So times, I will say bench weights, and then I will use O inside here, and then this will be a sum over all the all the values in. Uh, order so zero one two three they will be all here so when we multiply it actually let me change the order actually that's a better representation because bench weight is a constant here and then the bench is a variable just following the same notation here the constant comes uh, before the variable so when we just take this summation for every player it will be lineup plus captain plus ten percent vice captain and then for every position it will multiply it with the weight. So this game week XP is not exactly the expected points itself. It is kind of a score that you are trying to maximize. So it's kind of an um it is related to the, the obviously the projected points, but it has some like extra because of the bench. I think we are ready to run this. So what I will do is I will try to run this and see if we will get any uh errors at the end. Let me switch to this. Oh, got the same file. So when I run this file directly, what I need to see is under uh, source folder. Uh, currently, as you see, I only have my Python files. Uh, it will create this optimal plan regular.csv, and we will see if it's able to generate the correct uh, a correct output for us. Oh. I think we also need to add something here just to see the solution uh, inside the file. But let me see if it will actually solve the problem. So, so you asked you asked me at the start of the stream, you know, not at the start of the stream, um, at the start of you adding the bench weights to the optimizer, you know, about what my opinion on bench weights is. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so when you add this to the optimizer. You know, the, the fun of it is trying to think how your what your what your opinion of bench weights is. Trying to try and map that to a figure, to a number, mm -hmm. um, and you can play around a bit. You can change the values up and down until you see an output which aligns with your thinking. Um, and there was a number that you started off at the start, the decay rate, um, yeah. which is mm -hmm. a, another really important number. Um, and I noticed that yours is set to 0 0.84 mm -hmm. um, which I think was I think fantasy football trout did some research on that a year or so ago and he found that to be an, an optimal number for decay at the time um, mm -hmm. so it, it'll be interesting to see where the kind of the community or the research leads us towards in terms of optimal bench weights yeah that's true yeah so uh, like I think even here I'm using 0 0.84 for the DK base, but yeah, that's also debatable. Uh, based on how many days you have between game week deadlines, that value should actually change a little bit. Like, especially now that we are in an international break, if there are more days for your players to get injured, you know, just, you know, fall off yeah. the stairs or something, that DK should be lower because you know that the future projected points are too far ahead so that they will change, likely they will change. Um, here I will just say bench values equal to O, and I will add bench value after is lineup, is captain, is vice captain. Do I have squad even? No, but okay, everyone appears in this list is just a but member anyway, so after this lineup, I can actually add uh, bench value. Um, actually, let me do this minus one. So if a player is not on bench, 
uh, that player will get minus one. Otherwise, we will see a value here. And then after lineup, I added bench order, or maybe just simply bench. Simplicity reasons. And let me repeat this uh, test. Uh, like if you haven't tried optimization before, that something that might take your attention is how long it's taking to solve the optimization model. Um, this depends on many things, like how many game weeks you are trying to solve. And I know that there are like uh, like solve or like optimization tools online that does this almost like immediately. But we are what we are trying to do here is we are trying to solve a linear optimization model to optimality. So every time you solve this problem, you will get the same solution uh, with these parameters and th this solution is guaranteed to be optimal. I think bench very and good. The, op the optimizer does have to do some heavy work in trying to mm -hmm. help with this solution, which is why it takes so long. You know, when I try and convert people to, to using you know, FPL review and ex expected points. One of the common criticisms that people come to me with is, is that they've got this transfer suggestion and it, it doesn't make sense because it's just looking at the next eight game weeks flat and that one transfer that you're making right now and the change it has on your team yeah. you know, in total net. That's it. Whereas right now, it, this optimizer right here it's going through every single game week and looking at every single well not literally every single because it's going to be used in some algorithms within this to try and reduce the scope right mm -hmm. i imagine um but you know it's it, it's going to be going through a lot of potential decisions that you could make to get to this output team yep. for you mm -hmm. um so we solved the problem by the way, but uh, when we uh, actually open the file, you will see that like uh, obviously lineup players have minus one. That's what we wanted. Um, and then these players have just minus one, zero, zero, zero. I just checked the solution file and I noticed that every player who are not in our like lineup, they are selected as bench players, which is strange, but not that strange because we forgot to add a constraint so the bench players should be part of the squad that's the constraint we forgot actually so we have this for lineup here and then i will say add constraints i'll say bench p o is less than or equal to squad p w because if a player is not in the squad if this value is zero then this should be zero anyway Um, in the chat, I see. just noticed that you are using a horizon of 3 in the multi period pie. Currently, horizon is 4 plus. In your recent experiment, some people are trying to guess the parameters that maximize XP for last season. I noticed the best results were obtained using what's the best value. Um, so, the best value itself is a little bit a uh, debatable topic. I think higher uh, the horizon is better for you to plan. Um, obviously, 3 periods or like horizon of 3 is. Uh, too uh, too low in my opinion, um, because like you cannot get rid of all and your entire squad in three game weeks, so it will be kind of a problem for you if you are not just giving biopic decisions. The reason why I am using three here so that optimization can go faster. Um, technically, I think FBI review is giving up to eight game weeks, so it's better to try to solve this problem for that horizon. But sometimes that one takes a few minutes, and so I'm just trying to do it like in a shorter time and then uh, you can actually play with a higher value and also the fact that CBC is a, a free solver so it is a pretty good for small scale problems but when we start adding also the, the chips and other type of decisions this model will get slower and slower so solving for 8 game weeks sometimes takes too long so we will also look at those but uh, answering your question I think Highest uh, horizon is just better in general. Um, yeah, the decay helps with that horizon because mm -hmm. you know you can have a horizon as high as possible while still not handicapping your solution by unfairly giving too much weight to later game weeks. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the competition that you did with you know taking different people's inputs um, for hindsight optimization. You limited you limited us to five or six 
Game Week Horizon, not because that was optimal, but just because you would have been running the optimizer for many, many days otherwise, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, so the if you let optimization do the decision for wildcard and free hit, that takes like very long, like unbelievably long. And so the for the ex, for the reoptimization competition, since I had like more than twenty uh, uh, like uh, inputs, uh, and for uh, like two uh, two stages. It was taking a long time for me just to run all the instances, so I said, "Okay, let's limit to five and then that one that one was taking long too. I said, "Okay, let's do it four uh, obviously, the higher is better for my f p l season last year. I used eight periods from uh almost from the start to finish, but then um yeah as as you mentioned d k helps, and I wasn't really using d k at the beginning until actually um Trout actually raised that question about you know what should be the optimal DK. Actually, yeah, that that was a big part because if you don't apply any DK, then optimization chases those smallest gains in like game weeks further down the line, just to ma- get that extra 0.01 XP. Sometimes it suggests you to transfer someone else, and then that player sometimes gets injured. Like in my case, it was like Rashford. Uh, they said. Okay, I think he's injured. I just sold him and then learned that he's not injured. Yeah, that was that was sad. <laughs> sad memories. Um, let me see. Let me close this. Do I have the same issue again? No. And, and okay. with the horizon as well, thing things like the free hit chip and the wild card will, will make you want to use a, a shorter horizon. Um, and until we've got them implemented into the optimizer, because you know that you're going to get a completely fresh yeah. shot mm-hmm. of the team after you've used your wildcard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, so in the solution file now, uh, I just want to show you that we're almost at the top of the hour. So the, our goalkeeper, uh, bench goalkeeper, my bench goalkeeper is Bekovic. And then uh, is, if you look at here, transfer out value is 1. It's just suggesting me to transfer out uh, Tissimikas and then by uh, uh, Cancelo. Um, so here, and then the order of, we haven't sorted them yet, but, so this is my bench goalkeeper, and then Rapinha is my first bench, and then, uh, Dunk, and then, uh, Obafemi. Um, so, just before we, uh, close this stream, let me actually try a ridiculously high value and see that if that will change the optimal, um, because... It should uh, technically change the optimal solution a little bit, but um, we don't know yet. And also, this bench weight is also being applied to future game weeks, uh, by the way, not only this game week, but also the future game weeks. So, if I choose a ridiculous value like 99%, it will always almost treat the bench, like my first bench, just like a lineup player, almost like a lineup player, and then it will probably choose someone else uh, to transfer this game week. After this is completed, I will just commit my changes and then push it to GitHub so you can ch- just check the source code too. And so we haven't finished everything that we wanted to cover here. Uh, we managed to test scenarios, but I was going to talk about random noise, which we need to do it in the next episode. Um, let me see. So the transfer didn't change actually, but I haven't... Ch- Actually, I haven't checked if the, the future ga- future transfers were different or not, but in this case, uh, just wrapping uh, 3.7 uh, projected points is getting multiplied with 0.99, as I just uh, said, uh, and then it's being added to the uh, objective function. Um, so I think that's all. Uh, before I close the stream, do you have any question, James, or anyone in the uh, among the viewers? Um, I don't know. I mean, I do. There's loads. I have loads of questions. This I think this is brilliant. You know, I would love to know if, for example, you could ever see yourself being able to adjust your bench weights or change your optimizer to be able to adjust bench weights for different game weeks differently. For example, is... mm-hmm. after this international break, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo's come in. We don't know if he's going to be starting or not. We don't know if Torres is going to be starting for Man City or not. 
um, you know, I could see myself giving more emphasis to my first venture in game week four than in game week five. Um, yeah. And it'd be great to somehow in the future handle that. Yeah, so it is possible, actually. Let me also show you again my uh, planner. But here I have this button for adjusting bench weight. So this one, actually, what it does is it uh, looks at these expected minutes and then try to uh, find probability of these your lineup players playing and then it comes up with automated bench uh, percentages so when i click this see that my first bench gets only three percent because almost everyone in my lineup is actually uh, like a player who's expected to appear in the game and if you see here like if you go all the way down uh, let me see so this is the last game week in the horizon so it's game week seven so you will see that so the first uh, bench weight for the first position is 20%. So even though the for, for this particular gaming it is 3%, it is using a higher percentage for here. Just because the expected minutes, as you see, I have a few players who are below 80 minutes. And then I'm converting this into this uh, like percentage of, like, uh, the, the probability of appearing. So, yes. So, it's, so answer your question is yes. So it's possible and hopefully... Uh, we might cover it uh, in the next episodes. Wow. And I understand why optimizing for wildcard is difficult, but for free hit, wouldn't you just check the delta between your team and the optimal single week team every week in the horizon and free it if that is greater than some threshold? That's true, but also there is this uh, possibility that, so if you know that you will use free hit in, um, let's say, game week seven, and planning from here for the next eight game weeks. So game week seven is just at the middle of the planning horizon. So that actually that and also it also affects your uh, buy and sell prices. So it is much easier than wildcard in that sense. You're right. Wildcard is much more difficult than free hit. Um, but free hit is still generating some kind of problems. And the problem with free hit is actually not because you know checking the delta is difficult. But if you are trying to give feed it into optimization, instead of squad, we need a, net, a new set of variables called squad free hit, which will add, again, a ton of uh, like new variables and constraints into our model, which will make the model bigger. Um, if we only add free hit, and if we only add wildcard, uh, free hit model will run faster. In that sense, you are right. But when all of these are together, it's just creating just a messy model in general but optimization is able to handle it yeah so um, it's, it's not difficult in terms of the raw logic is it's difficult in terms of the time it would take the optimizer to actually find the solution because it opens up so many doors mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's true um i'm using xp data from offense full scud and it's good my team season currently at nine sorry four ninety five k Oh, okay, awesome. Well, I hope it works for you. I mean, I just used uh, just pure optimization outputs last season, even though I made a few mistakes in terms of how I played the game. I finished at 300k, so hopefully this season will be better. And also, if, if you have been using projected points from the beginning this season, I think... Um, like I'm using FBI review and the the, the, the projection, projections were really helpful this year. I I had a great start at the beginning. What's your rank, James? Um I don't actually know off the top of my head. One second. I am currently rank seventy nine K. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. good, Maybe good next time you start. should do the tutorial and I should listen to you. Oh, don't be silly. You, 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 you had a better game week than me last week, and you know you're you're only as good as your last game week or something like that. Right. <laughs> That's true. Um, okay. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in and listening. Thanks for joining us, and thank you, uh, James, for uh, joining the stream today. No problem. Thank you mm -hmm. for inviting me. Right. Have a great day. Bye.